Winter is on its way out and severe weather season will ramp up as we work into the start of March. And the pattern signals right now indicate that March and probably the rest of spring could feature one of the most active severe weather seasons on record. In today's video, we're going to talk about what the key pattern drivers are behind this threat, when it will really ramp up, and the areas that will be most impacted as we go into this spring. Hey guys, real quick, before we get into the forecast, be sure to subscribe to our page, like this video, share it with your friends. We want to make sure that everybody is safe as we go into the most active time of the year in terms of severe weather. And be sure to let folks know if they're making business decisions or maybe a school system trying to enhance safety uh, for their schools and their, their students and their faculty as we go into the spring, let them know about Clarity. Clarity is designed specifically to help with high cost decisions, uh, emergency preparedness decisions. Uh, you can chat with a meteorologist at any time to assist you with key decisions to save money, save time, and most importantly, keep people safe. So if you know somebody that could use Clarity and use better weather forecasts, uh, be sure to send them to BAMWX.com. All right, guys, let's get into the forecast and let's start here with our official severe weather season outlook. This is specifically severe weather activity, all modes, hail, wind and tornadoes compared to normal. And we're highlighting the most above normal threats to be from St. Louis to Louisville, Kentucky, Nashville, Tennessee, Memphis, Tennessee, and down into parts of the deep south. But we're really expecting much of the southeastern quadrant of the United States to feature above normal severe weather activity. That will ramp up as early as next week, and I see some similarities in March to the years that had the most tornado reports on record, but I wouldn't be shocked if April ends up being the month that has the most widespread and the most consistent, maybe the most memorable severe weather activity, which we're going to talk about in today's video. But let's start out with next week, because we have a big storm system that's going to ramp up across the central part of the country especially as we work into next Tuesday, and with it, it will surge warm air into the eastern part of the country and lead to a big uptick in severe weather potential from eastern Texas all the way out into the Tennessee Valley and the Deep South in this region in here. If we take a look at the initial indication from Colorado State's severe weather model here, this model did very well last year, by the way. You can see highest threat from eastern Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas, Mississippi, parts of Tennessee, but we could be looking at severe weather potential as far north as parts of Illinois, Indiana, Missouri, and Iowa. Uh, certainly will be a big difference from what we had last week with record-breaking cold across the country. So a big surge into spring, and I think this will continue to be a theme with these strong storm systems as we go into mid to late March. And part of the reason for that is what we call our global winds. Specifically, this is a forecast of the atmospheric angular momentum. Why is that so important? Well, this basically indicates weaker than normal global winds. When you have weaker than normal global winds, you tend to get a uh, more wavy jet stream. And when you get a more wavy jet stream, you tend to get stronger storm systems. And when you get stronger storm systems, you tend to get more severe weather threats. In fact, as we drop our global winds and we weaken those global winds, those actually tend to correlate strongly to the most active phases of severe weather. Specifically here, this bottom right in image, what we call GWO phase eight, and then these top two, phase one and phase two. These are basically representations of when our global winds are dropping. And you can see all these yellows and oranges and reds that you see indicating above normal severe weather activity. And so from this alone, there's a strong signal for a big uptick in severe weather activity as we work into the middle part of March. If we take a look at the upper level pattern as well, we see some key features that also tend to favor a more active severe weather season. If we take a look here, we see colder than normal conditions across western North America. We have the coldest air on the planet locked to the north over the Hudson Bay and Greenland. This will tend to allow for gulf moisture and warmth to work into the eastern part of the country and lead to a clashing of air masses that will favor a lot of rain and storm opportunities and yes severe weather in fact if we compare this to years that had the most tornado reports on record for the u.s in the month of march we see a lot of similarities 
Note how in this analog, the coldest air on the planet tends to be locked up north across uh, western North America, Alaska, and the northwestern tier of the U.S., and over parts of Greenland as well, and you get warmer than normal conditions in the southeast U.S. Again, that allows for that clashing of air masses and leads to the uptick in severe weather potential. If we go out through the middle part of March, we see a lot of similarities in the forecast data right now, not only for middle part of the middle part of March, but for the latter part of March as well. Look how similar that these are to these active March tornado months. And in fact, these were the top five years with the most tornado reports on record for the U.S. in the month of March. And with that signal in mind, factoring in our weakening global winds as well, here's the setup that we're going to expect mid to late March. And we're already ramping things up the first week of March. It probably just gets more and more active with time. That yellow area that we have circled here, that will be the area where I think we'll see the most frequent severe weather threats, potentially tornado outbreaks, the Deep South, the Tennessee Valley, the Southeast U.S., and the Ohio Valley. And our top analogs, years that match 2025, running about 90 reports higher than last year and about 60 reports higher than the average since 1999. Here's the average number of March tornadoes per state between 1999 and 2023. Our forecast right now is to see 60 to 70 more tornadoes than average in the month of March. Probably shifted a little bit further east as well in this particular region compared to normal. So something to keep in mind in terms of the area as well. We also see that reflected with the precipitation forecast. This is the 30-day precipitation forecast from the European weekly model. I think it has a very good handle on this pattern right now. Look at where it's the most active across the eastern half of the U.S. A lot of heavy rain events. We may need to watch for flooding events in the Ohio Valley. And with that, we'll also see an uptick in severe weather activity. So that's the March idea. What about the rest of spring? We need to draw our attention to the Central Pacific and specifically our lingering La Nina states. We have a colder than normal ocean pattern that is set up here in the equatorial Pacific and a lingering La Nina state in the Pacific. What does that mean? Well, from a historical standpoint, La Ninas tend to be a lot more active than El Ninos as we go into spring. These right images here, top right and bottom right, these are La Nina years. And the purple that you see indicates more frequent than normal severe weather activity. You compare that to El Nino years, El Nino years tend to be less active. And so this also supports an active severe weather season. We also want to look at the global ocean pattern because the Pacific Ocean, the Atlantic Ocean, how warm the Gulf is, all of these things help to drive our patterns and help to drive severe weather activity. It also matters if the Indian Ocean is warm or not, and especially the maritime. We have a lot of warm water over here. Historically, the most active severe weather seasons tended to also have warm water near Australia and Indonesia. So that is something to keep in mind. And I would say that the closest match to 2025 right now in terms of the ocean temperatures is 2011 which was the most active severe weather season on record. Very, very similar setup right now in the Pacific Ocean with La Nina, in the Atlantic Ocean, and in the Indian Ocean and the North Pacific Ocean. So a lot of similarities to 2011, which was a memorable season, had major tornado outbreaks, and I definitely think it's one that we need to keep an eye on as a similar year to 2025 as we move things forward. If we factor in a couple of other close matches here, guys, we get years like 21, 13, 11, 09, 06, and 01. You blend all of those together, and here's what the severe weather report frequency looks like compared to normal. All these yellows and oranges that you see indicates higher than normal severe weather activity, and you can see that's especially prevalent from the Ohio Valley to the Tennessee Valley down into the Deep South, not quite as active for parts of the Western Plains. And with that in mind, here's a good, again a look at our official severe weather season outlook. I think March and April especially, very, very active months compared to normal, but I would say higher than normal probabilities that severe weather season extends May and into June uh, in an active fashion as well. Those yellow and red areas, those are the areas to be on uh, most, most alerted, most on guard as we work over the next couple of months. 
as 2025 has the potential to be a memorable severe weather season. Again, if you want more details and more forecast updates, you can get that on our Clarity platform. We have an entire platform for businesses, organizations, events, and schools to help them make critical weather decisions. We put the link there in the description. Thank you all for watching. We'll have more updates as we go into spring.